I didn't think it would happen, but even 16 hours later, I got chills again. <laughs> I'm shaking again. Tiki, he did it. I'm happy for you. <laughs> He did it! He did it! In positive time, he got it right. <laughs> yes, he did. I, you know, there are so many things from last night's game. There are so many things to be excited about moving forward. But I'll make this very simple. When Pete Alonzo walked to the plate with the Mets trailing by two runs in the top of the ninth inning, I honestly thought there was no coming back for Pete. He had dropped a pop-up a few innings earlier. He had continued to struggle offensively. All of the things said about Pete, harshly but sort of accurately, I thought to myself, I said, Teek, I don't know how I can turn on a microphone as a Pete defender and actually talk my fellow Met fans into bringing him back. I thought it was that far gone. And so what we witnessed last night, not only selfishly as Met fans with their season being saved, his career in New York City was saved. I don't think he was coming back or there was any coming back from him bouncing into a double play or striking out. And instead, he delivered, in my humble opinion, in my lifetime, the greatest home run ever hit by a Met in postseason play. <laughs> That's what he did. To I mean, that's saying a lot. But you know what? You might not be wrong. I mean, the crazy thing is, is that leading up to that moment, because I'm on a plane, so I'm watching this via, I don't know, like app, just kind of watching what's happening. But the guy next to me has it on his phone. He's streaming it somehow on the plane. I don't know how the hell he was doing it, but he just starts like moving, like gyrating in his seat. And I'm like, what the hell's going on over there? He's like, beat it home run, beat it home run, three run home run, they got the lead. And so right before I had written you guys and said, the only person that's doing anything is Lindor. Two hits for Lindor, nobody else had a hit. Mm -hmm. And then he comes through in an epic fashion. And now there is justification for anything Pete. Whatever happens with Pete, whatever money he gets, whatever uh, the, 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 the organization decides to do with him, and hopefully it's keeping him, it is now justified despite a season of ineffectiveness from Pete Alonso, especially in the clutch. This was as clutch as we, you could, you could <laughs> possibly have. Yeah. And we talked about yesterday, hey, if you hit a home run in the first inning, is that clutch? <laughs> no, it's not. Do it in the top of the ninth with two on. That's clutch. Yeah, I think an elimination game down by two against the best close room baseball would qualify as clutch. But I love hearing that story that you just delivered of being on that airplane because that's the <laughs> other thing that's so special about last night. I don't know where this season's going. We will begin to look ahead to Philadelphia. We got a lot to get to over the course of the next four and a half hours. But I can promise you this, whether you're Tiki Barber, whether you're me, no matter who you are listening, I promise you that the emotions you felt during that at-bat, before that at-bat, and everything you experienced, you're never going to forget. And that's the beauty of sports. It's not just the moment. It's everything you felt in that moment. And trust me, Tiki, a lot of people have said that about you and some of your performances. Hey, Tiki, remember when you did this? Well, yeah. here's what I was doing. I right. was with my sister, or I was with my wife, and she was giving birth, or my child just pooed all over the place, and I had to clean it up. <laughs> like, we all have those stories from last night. You were on an airplane. Because you're right. doing hard work going to Seattle. Right. It's all Mets and Giant fans. That's really what it was. Right. They're all going Met, out there. They're all going out there. It's funny. My story last night, we all have it. And we'll hear from you throughout the day, especially early on. Because before we look ahead, I think we need to enjoy this moment. It's an all-time moment. 888-808-1019. I sat with both of my sons last night and my wife. And my oldest son, Jet, scored the game. That's right. I created a monster. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, that is it, awesome. Is it though? Because you it got is. <laughs> Forget the monster. Now he'll remember it in a u very unique way. It's not just watching it with dad. It was scoring it with dad. Well, that is epic. Well, Teak, there's a slight problem with that. Which is so Jet was scoring the game with dad, and after the back-to-back -back home runs by Jake Bowers and Sal Freelich. <laughs> He, he fell asleep <laughs> oh, 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 at the commercial break going into the top of the eighth inning. He fell asleep. And it's funny. Jet and I had a big argument. I was behind, right? I get back late. We're doing afternoon drive. We were on DVR and I was skipping commercials. And Jet said, I don't like that, Dad. We got to take our time. I said, no, no, no. We need to catch up. 
Well, once we started playing commercials, eight-year-old fell asleep because those commercial breaks take forever. Right. So he's out in the eighth inning. And after the bottom of the eighth inning concluded, I looked at— Why didn't at, you wake him up? I'll tell you why. Because in the bottom of the eighth inning, I said to my wife, hon, I'm going to go into the Rico Bronya studio. I'm going to leave. All right? I'm going to watch the last inning. I'm going to watch the death of the season by myself. I'm going to record a Rico, and then I'll come back. And she said, okay, baby, I'm so sorry. And that's not me giving up. That's me just changing the juju, if you will. <laughs> so I went up into that Rico Bronya studio. And as that inning developed, and we will never forget Francisco Lindor's at-bat. That was an all-timer, a Sean Dunstan-esque at-bat for those that remember 1999. I'll never forget the Brandon Nimmo at-bat being down 0-2. When Pete Alonso swung at that 3-1 bender that hooked there, I started shaking. The chills that went down my spine as that ball went to right field. And like everyone else, I screamed at the bloody top of my lungs. No one heard it because I was all the way far away from my family. And it was like this out-of-body experience. And then T.K., I didn't know what to do. Should I wake Chet up? <laughs> yes, you should have. I couldn't wake him up. Why didn't you? Because they didn't win I, the game yet. I'm so disappointed in you, but that's the moment. You would have shared that moment forever with Jet. Forever. I, but you know what, Teek? I ended up having a moment, and this is the beauty of sports. We all have this memory from last night, all unique for all of us. Mets win the game. David Peterson, wonderful job. Jesse Winker, Starling Marte, all the little things that contributed. After they won the game, and I'm trying to get the calm down after that awesome victory, I go back upstairs, and Jet wakes up. And the first thing he says to me, very first thing, did the Mets win, Dad? <laughs> and the great. 10 seconds of me describing, not as accurately as Howie Rhodes, but me describing what happened and the joy he faced at 1 o'clock in the morning after I told him, that was our moment. Right. That works. That works. It would have been better if he would have seen it <laughs> live, if he would have experienced the euphoria live. It would have been amazing, but that works just as well. Yeah. You can tell the story. It's funny. Like, I'm not even a Mets fan, and two of the most epic baseball moments that I can remember while working at the at WFAN have been Mets moments. One, because of the, the watch party that we do, and Francisco <laughs> Lindor uh, hitting a home run, and now on a plane with giant Met fans <laughs> flying to Seattle to call the Giant game, it, 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 half the plane is erupting because of the Mets. You know, Pete Alonso hitting his home run in the top of the ninth inning. And, and you're right, Evan. They're not forgetting. You don't forget that. No. How, I mean, how can I forget that moment? No matter even if I don't care what happens with the Mets going forward, that moment is forever ingrained in my head because of the circumstances that they happened under. And that's, that's the other part. So you've got two incredible things things that occurred last night. You had the simple thing. The simple thing is the Mets season was on the line. The yes. simple thing was they were about to lose to the Milwaukee Brewers in very, like, eh, blah fashion. They could not hit Tobias Myers. They couldn't hit the Brewer bullpen. And after Jose Budo, and I had no issue with Carlos Mendoza going to Jose Budo, when he gives up the back-to-back -back home runs, it's like, wow, that's going to be a kind of an anticlimactic way for this season to end. <laughs> right. We're just going to get shut out. We're going to lose 2 nothing. And obviously, the Mets make a comeback in a winner-take-all game with their back to the wall. That's story number one. You put that on the side. The Mets saved their season. You had a player save his career. And that's not hyperbolic. That's a fact. Because right. every Met fan out there knows this. You know what you said about Pete Alonso throughout this game. I'm not talking about what you said a week ago or some of those fun clips we played on the open. I'm talking about during the game. I know what you said because I thought the same thing. When Pete Alonso can't catch a pop-up off the bat of William Contreras as the Mets are trying to salvage that seventh inning, he dropped the pop-up. This is <laughs> yes. after going 0 for his first three. We all thought, this is it for him. What a horrible ending to his Met career. He can't come back from this. How could he come back to Met fans after this kind of pathetic, embarrassing showing? He was done as a New York Met. This wasn't simply a guy who's a free agent, and we'll see what the market looks like. I don't know how I was going to come on the radio for the next few months and make the case to keep him. I don't know how I was going to do it. And he faced that. Maybe he wasn't thinking about it, Tiki, but he was facing that. So not only do you have in bucket number one the Mets season being on the line, we had a lifelong Mets career on the line in an at-bat, 
And in the most epic fashion, he answered the call with one of the most clutchest hits this franchise has ever seen. No, it's special. I mean, as Met fans, you got to feel all the love for Pete Alonso right now. It was so many other people that, got, that came through in critical moments up until the moment that mattered most. And it was Pete. And I feel happy for him, you know, because I, don't, I didn't know it was going to be his future with this team or what the negotiations were going to be like. But he has now the, the not the golden ticket, but he has like the golden moment. He has this moment that he can just just play on people's emotions with. And I'm not talking just, you know, fans. I'm talking about David Stearns. I'm talking about Steve Cohen. It, you, they're never going to forget that moment because of what it meant to them and the organization. Again, let's not forget, this was a season that I said at the very beginning, and probably most people agreed, this is just an evaluation year. But it's turned from evaluation into belief and epicness almost every turn of the way. Every bad thing or, or setback that this team has had, they've responded and, and, and come up humongous. Like it's just, this is why we said yesterday, you know, the Yankees are interesting because, look, they're the number one seed in the, in the American League. They, you know, they should get to the World Series given the path that they have to take. But it kind of felt routine along the way. This Mets season has been so damn entertaining because of all the ups and downs and question marks and not, and not believing that it would actually happen. Yet it keeps happening. Every single time. Now, it feels like a team of destiny. The problem is you can't believe that you're a team of destiny. Only way destiny that happens is if you do it. Yeah. It's crazy. You mentioned the Lindor home run. That was this week. Mm -hmm. This week. That was Monday. That was Monday. <laughs> on Monday and then on Thursday, you could argue, and trust me, I will, that we saw two of the most important consequential home runs in the history of the New York Mets. That's right. We saw, I think without a shadow of a doubt, outside of Piazza 9-11, which I put in a separate bucket because it was beyond baseball, you saw the most important regular season home run in the history of the Mets on Monday, and you may have seen the most important postseason home run in the history of the Mets because I was racking my brain thinking about all the other ones, Todd Pratt, Robin Ventura, Darryl Strawberry, Ray Knight, and the difference is their backs were against the wall. It was over. The Mets were about to lose. They were about to face extermination. The season was about to end. And while Devin Williams may have been tipping his pitches. <laughs> oh, that, he definitely was. <laughs> that's a part of baseball. And Pete Alonzo and the Mets were able to take advantage of it. So Tiki was on a plane with giant Mets fans. I locked myself in a room after my son fell asleep. These are memories we'll never forget. Sean, I know you're a Yankee fan. Yeah. What's your golden memory from the Pete Alonso <laughs> home run game? My wife actually watching baseball for the first time in her life, fist pumping and going nuts because she couldn't believe the ball. Wow. Your wife Wait, was she, is she a Met fan She's now? She's not. Her grandma was a big Met fan. Her favorite player was Pete Alonso. She passed away in March, and the whole theme has been this Met magical run. She's paid attention from afar, but really got into it when Alonso home run. So your night. wife was celebrating the Pete home run? Yeah, and basically crediting her passed away grandmother. Well, you know what? I give her passed away grandma yeah. all the credit. But I, I right. gotta be honest. I sat and you can't there. even shoot that one down. I couldn't do it. And I sat there, even as a Yankee fan, and I've said this time and time again. Maybe it's I'm not taking the the Met World Series run serious yet. Maybe mm -hmm. it's that I'm getting numb at my old age. But I enjoyed the moment. Well, thank I, you. I did. I, I thought it was. I, I, I yelled, "Holy bleeping bleep!" at the top of my lungs. I, I want to tell you what I envisioned positive Tommy's moment to look like. And then, of course, he can tell us what it was. But I want you to tell... I'm going to illustrate how I envisioned the consumption of that home run from positive Tommy. You ready for this? Let's hear it. He's on a beach chair, like a beach lounge. He's laying down. He's very calm. He's got his two hands behind his back as if he's chilling, and his wonderful wife is serving him Mai Tais. And he is basically calmly saying, Hun, they're making it exciting. But we got this. <laughs> and then when Pete hit the home run, Tommy was like, see, I had nothing. We had nothing to worry about. Tommy, accuracy level on that? Uh, zero. <laughs> no, okay. So positive Tommy's wife was not serving me anything. Positive Tommy's wife was sleeping. <laughs> and as Pete Alonzo stepped to the plate, I said, come on, Pete. I sent you the positive vibes one time. And as soon as he hit the ball, I did this. Get up! Get up! <laughs> Get up! 
<laughs> and I woke everybody up in the neighborhood, and we all celebrated together. What a moment. Evan, myself, you, we sent Pete those positive vibes, and look what happened, Evan. I, the I, positivity led to Pete. But you know what, Tom? Tommy, here's the thing. I give you all, you get 100% of the positive vibe credit. I'm not sending positive vibes. I'm being honest. And when we sat here yesterday and we talked a lot about Pete Alonso, what I couldn't wrap my head around was that he's not this. That's the thing I couldn't understand. And when people would argue and say he's never gotten a big hit, I get defensive because it wasn't true. And just because you say something over and over again doesn't mean it's true. And so what I would say is he has not an impactful season. He has not a clutch season, but I've seen it before. I saw him hit a game-winning home run. Granted, it's the fifth inning, not the ninth inning, against the San Diego Padres in a playoff elimination game two years ago. I've seen him hit walk-off home runs, game-tying home runs. I just didn't. It wasn't. I want to be positive. That's you, bro, and I give that to you. It was, he's better than this. This is not who he is. And I am so happy, no matter where this season ends, whether it ends to Philadelphia, God hope it doesn't, that Pete Alonso got to rewrite his legacy with Met fans and not be remembered for a falsitude, not be remembered as someone who couldn't handle the big moment when I've seen him do it before. And so in that clip, that wasn't me sending him positive vibes. That was me refusing to believe he was the quote-unquote bum that a lot of Met fans he, thought he, he was. He deserved that moment because of what he's done for this franchise, for this community, for this fan base, for this brand. He deserved to do that and have that moment. So it's been the theme of this Met season all year long. And now, Pete, no pressure. Just go do it against the Phillies now. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> we'll get to your calls next. Guinea Med fans, 888-808-1019.